We're here with Mike, uh, head brewer at MIA Brewing. Um, Mike Demetrius from MIA Brewing. Uh, down from Chicago, uh, previously at Finch's Brewery, and he's bringing all this Chicago, San Francisco knowledge down to the Miami brewing scene. And uh, thank you for coming. Thanks a lot, I yeah, appreciate the opportunity. So I, I lived about four blocks from Tornado. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a um, uh, lower hate neighborhood. Um, amazing, one of the best craft beer bars in the country, uh, arguably, and um, and I was there a lot, and um, and learned learned a lot about you know the, the ins and outs and, and what to send back. Yeah, you go. <laughs> I, I think a lot of being a beer fan, um, a craft beer fan in San Francisco is sending beer back. You know, it's just right. like, it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what really like what really um, like convinced me that this is, my soul belongs to this this industry and or this um, this passion was is the Anderson Valley Beer Festival in Northern California in the Anderson Burns Valley. A blast. You camp out and you spend two days just going hog wild with a couple thousand people and it's like every Northern California and Cascadian brewery. Right. And it's it's speaking weird languages. Yeah, speaking bootling. And <laughs> it's just amazing. Um, it's awesome. And so every year we, you know, that was like the highlight highlight of of, of the year, it's, you know, that thing that you look forward to. In the right. Midwest, it's a uh, great taste in the Midwest up in Madison. Um, equally as amazing. Yeah, oh, was that part of your kind of like fascination with this? I mean I know it's part of mine. It's the ability to bring people together. I think craft beer really brings people together. I think it, uh, I think it creates a community. I mean, it's got, there's definitely a community. Right. And I think it's such an approachable thing that so many people are coming into. I mean, is that kind of like the reason why it's kind of elevated for you? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, people that would otherwise have absolutely nothing in common. It's, you know, like, right. like I, I don't know, like, you, you, t you can talk to somebody for two hours, um, right. you know, at one of these events or, you know, and and find out amazing things about them, and clearly you would never, never right. even give this person the time of day yeah. if, if there wasn't that common denominator. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean the the community um, that that is spawned from something as as simple and as as I mean, perfect as beer is, is an amazing one. It's a powerful. One. Yeah. Well, you, you went to Chicago. Um, did you go straight to Finch's? Uh, no, I, I was. Um, I ran a couple bars, and I um, put the put the bars together at the Waldorf. It was a private um, uh, luxury hotel called the Elysium before that, and then Waldorf came in and bought it, um, and did that for um, a couple years. And then um, uh, there was some overlap there, and then the Finch's opportunity came along, and my life changed forever. There you go. Yeah. And what was your official title at Finch's? Um, well, uh, I was the operations manager, brewer, and um, and, and a co-owner. Pretty much everything. Well, yeah. I mean, not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were Finches. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> we were all Finches. There you go. I was not the head brewer though. All right. Um, and um, you know, and that's part of the reason I left. Um, they, they, I, they, they're doing. You know, they were doing great stuff, but. Um, it came to the point where I um, had the opportunity and wanted to start my own project sure. where I could have more creative control and with somebody who you know kind of shared my vision and yeah. so I ended up here. We're gonna get into your vision okay. uh, in a second, but uh, you know, so I mean, you're you're not the head brewer of Finches. I'm assuming you're learning a hell of a lot. Absolutely. Um, Richard Grant is the head brewer. Um, amazingly talented. Individual. Is he still the head brewer there? No, he's not. He just okay. left. Um, and but um, just, uh, I mean, I learned from him um, detail, um, consistency, um, when to take shortcuts and when not to. Right. You know, and those are really important on the production level. You know, you can you, you can teach yourself all you want from books and home brewing and all that, but when you enter into a room like this, on equipment right. like this, there's so much that you need to be taught. Right. And uh, I, beyond I brewing, be, yeah, beyond well, yeah, and because just working in a factory because right. that's what we're doing. It's working I mean, in small factories. I mean, you, you want to stay true to your craft, your art, right? What you've worked hard to become, right? But you also need to turn a profit, right? Absolutely. And so the balance between that is the difficulty, I guess, or the difference between maybe this and a brew pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the margins are. 
tiny when you're production only, which we were. Um, so we ended up um, expanding our markets to 17 states, I think, and 24 different distribu distributors. And I don't even know where they're at now. I'm, I'm sure there's more than that. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, they're still around. Which is a, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're doing well. Thing, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I was going to that is, is which is amazing to think that they're still around in a city like Chicago, which is huge beer scene. Yeah. Uh, some would argue. I mean, you got Colorado, you have got Oregon, you got California. But some would say Chicago is the biggest and best. Uh, it's, it's, it's becoming. Amazing. It's looking that way. I, you know, arguably, I have some bias, but uh, <laughs> the last I checked, there were like 40 breweries either open or in planning just in the city limits. Right. And then like 75 open or in planning right. in the Chicago land, greater Chicago land. Is that because it's, it's insane? Is that because the city is inviting to these breweries? Uh, I wouldn't say so. No? It, it wasn't. It wasn't extremely easy, as far as I remember, uh, opening finches. Um, I think it's um, it's a cultural thing. Like I mean, before prohibition, there was um, there there was well over that uh, that number uh, in in Chicago in the Chicago area. Right. In the next few years, they'll probably exceed the pre-prohibition numbers. But there's um, there's a history there. There's right. a culture, and it's being revitalized, and it's and it's amazing to watch. Right. Now most of those breweries that existed pre-prohibition were were lager houses, and I'm guessing most of that beer tasted similar. You had, I think, the difference is people before prohibition didn't have a choice but to buy local, right. to buy handmade. That's awesome, and we're going back to that. And now we have a choice, and we're still doing it. Right. So um, it's better. Yeah. When I mean, you're supporting the people that you're living with, one. Yeah. I think, and I think that's a huge thing about craft beer. Uh, here's the political spiel that we're in Florida, and we're going to get into that because right. this brewery has been in production, or has been in uh, construction, construction for so long because of it. Where we're at, yeah. um, I think people uh, are, are failing to see how much importance something like this has to culture. I mean, it brings local businesses together. Uh, it's employing local people. I mean, the other brewer here is Piero, a local guy. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you're going to hire a bunch of people for the tasting room, a bunch of help for the back room. You guys do production here. You guys are going to distribute. How many jobs is that creating? Um, and I think people are finally starting to understand that that's something we need to support. Right. Um, and so I'm happy to say you guys are supporting it. You guys are doing it. Um, but that, that's what craft beer is. I mean, it's, it's supporting this local field, isn't it? I mean, it's craft beer is, well, I'll, I'll say just in terms of labor, it's, ex it's wonderfully uh, inefficient when it comes to labor. And there, it, a brewery this size will probably have, you know, in a few years at full production, will probably have a staff of 15, but just behind the scenes. Right. Um, and, uh, and we'll be putting out a fair amount of beer, but um, they'll have less people than that, you know, at, at a Budweiser facility right. because it's all automated. It's a button. This isn't automated, this is done by hand. So I mean, we're, we're uh, tasting. Creating a lot of jobs, this industry. Miami is just a few years into this craft thing. Right. Um, and yet, um, has a very developed palate. Yeah, I mean, you and have to see something in it because you've got a wife, you've got kids, yeah. you've got a life in Chicago. Hey, let's pack it all up. I'm gonna be the lead brewer at MIA. Um, what did you see in Miami to make you say, okay, all that effort is worth the move to a city that has one production brewery, probably wasn't even open when you moved down here. Mark, have you ever been in a winter in Chicago? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, I've heard about the winter in Chicago. No, you've heard about. Okay, yeah, exactly. All right, you wouldn't need to ask that so question. So it wasn't too much. <laughs> you ever stepped step one foot off a plane in a <laughs> February? And at O'Hare. So it wasn't too much of a tug then. No. no, no. <laughs> um, I mean, Chicago is, is, is a magical place. I love it to death, and I can totally see myself moving back at some point. But, um, but it, it just wasn't, um, like professionally, it, it wasn't, um, uh, I didn't see my immediate future there. Right. Uh, Miami had the allure of being an amazing, like, it's like the New York City of Latin America. There's all right. these cultures and flavors. Um, the weather's awesome. I'm a beach guy. I grew up on the beach, so there's that. But there's so there was so much that there was a little bit I knew about, and then so much I didn't know about. 
that I was just like mosquito to the flame. Like I want to be a part of this. I want right. to understand it. I want to experience it. I want to immerse myself and then see if I can can affect things positively. Right. And kind of and kind of be a part of this like this first wave of, of what's going on here. And yeah. it's so clearly about to happen. Right. I mean, we've got neighborhoods like Winwood that are gonna have five breweries soon. Yeah. Um, you know, you guys are gonna have Biscayne Bay down the streets. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's, there's, I see the growth, it's awesome. It, it, it's, you think part of that is that, uh, what you're talking about, there's a lot of different, it's like the New York, right, of, of Latin America. We've got a lot of different influences here, a lot of ability to create a lot of different flavors that a lot of different palates are going to be able to approach. Right. I mean, you can put st different stuff in a beer here, I'm sure, that you couldn't put somewhere else because maybe the uh, culture down here is more accepting of different sorts of flavors. Mm -hmm. Um, and vice versa. Uh, I think there's a big renaissance going on in a lot in, in a lot of the country um, to just adhere to the classics, the classic styles, right. try to understand them more, and um, and really play to the subtleties of a style. Sure. I don't think Miami has any interest in that right now. Sure. And I, th I think it may happen eventually, but that's Miami. I think in general, it's I, it's, it's, it's a city that's like it's big. It's you know, screw the general, screw the. I mean, yes, tradition is important. But we're such a young city, I mean, what is tradition right. here, right? right? So it's like, let's create our own identity. I mean, and that's kind of like what you're doing with the Kolsch. You're putting your own spin on it. Mm -hmm. um, it, it so is that, going to go in, is that going to go into your mind when you're sitting here and you're thinking, when you're up here, you're thinking of the next ingredient list? Well, you know, like the way I look at beer is, <clears throat> um, I, I think as a brewer, it's my responsibility, it's our responsibility. If we're going to, before you, you play with a, a classic style, or or any style really, like before you tweak it, alter it, take away from, add to, or borrow, you you need to understand it and maybe not master it, but you need to be able to brew that beer and have it be be good and have it be a good example. Sure, sure. So I, you know, I, I don't think that making some boysenberry cobbler Oktoberfest as a home brewer is <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give it too much credit because right. I, I want to taste your Oktoberfest. Right. I want to know that you understand the style. Sure. I, I, before I before I dive into something like that, I want to know the history of it, and I want to know why that style came to be, and then the the fundamental pieces that come together, and why those are to make that style. Right. And then, and only then, tweak it and sure. make it make it your own, which I think is the most purely American quality that you can have. Yeah. Um, but I've got this thing I tell people, there's nothing more American than craft beer right now. Yeah. You know, it's, it's local, it is local economy, it is local products, it is local business, uh, and it is handmade. It's right. back to the source. And um, hit it right in the head, I think. I mean, it's, it, this is America right here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Without being cheesy. And, and the same principles apply, I think, to, to so many other things. That the old world, all of the, the cultures and traditions we get, we, we get these from our, our, like in beer, our classic styles, we get those from the old world. From, right. We get them from England, we get them from Germany, we get them from, from Poland, we get them from Belgium. Uh, we get them from, you know, even Latin America, we get them from Mexico. Um, we, we get them, you know, from all over the world, but their hands are tied either by law, the Dine Heinz Kabat, or by centuries old tradition. But, but they can't, can I swear on yeah, of course. They, they, can, they can't fuck with the stock. There you right? go. Yeah, it's fucking um, okay on this. This is the internet. Um, <laughs> they can't fuck with it, um, and we can, and we should. Once we understand it, and, we, and once we we can we can we have fully wrap our head around it and, and appreciate it. And I think and I think that has a lot. I think that's Miami too. It's all these different cultures. It's all these different people and and, and flavors and and ideas coming together. And I think it's important to understand. To, to not just mash us all together and say this is Miami, but to, but to look at us individually, and and each of these these things, um, it takes each of these things and all these histories and cultures and traditions to that, and that makes Miami right in the same sense right um, that that's that's what an American beer is right. Speaking of that, he's got so much trust in you. I think that's really important for the growth of this brewery. He does. I'm I'm very fortunate. Yeah, I mean, he seems to just kind of like I love Mike. Whatever he thinks is a good idea. <laughs> beer seems to be seems to be his. He, he looks so relaxed, you know. Like, if he doesn't think it's a good idea, he'll tell me in a very nice <laughs> way. But he'll tell me straight up. <laughs> I would love to see him get mad. No, it doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, you guys, um, slated to open. 
Well, my generic answer I tell people is 2014, but um, in all honesty, we'll probably be there in like two or three weeks on the production side. So we'll be running this thing. Um, we just we're we're just about to get our uh, TCL, which is like a temporary permit to like, uh, start up, start up the business. So you'll be getting um, kegs at the restaurants and the bars, right? Uh, but tap room will. Three or four weeks after that. Taproom will be another couple months, so like mid to late summer. Um, we still have some construction to do because we're going to pour a slab, we're going to do a big um, uh, beer garden out there, and, and then yeah, got to do all the furnishings, all the interior stuff. But it's going to be nice though, and we're not going to half ass anything. So. Yeah. Well, that's the engineer in the background, you know? Yeah, I mean, those guys are uh, they're, they're masters to the masters and slaves to the detail. <laughs> <laughs> they're all architects, you know? So right. it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, their, it's their first thing. This is like their baby. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so when is when? I guess when can people in Miami expect to see you guys in a restaurant or in a bar? Um, uh, the earliest. Uh, here, see, here's where I, I, don't, I definitely don't like to give dates, but um, assuming we're brewing in, let's say, three weeks. Uh, let's, so be, let's be like. Let's say a month, a month and a half from now. There we go. A month and a half from now. All right. So um, this is um, mid mid July already. July already. So, the end of August. September. Let's be conservative. We okay. Put, we don't want to put you in any, right. you know. <laughs> so, all right. So Is that Labor Day? Yeah. <laughs> September. All right. And then, and then when are we going to see bottles? Uh, bottles are going to take a little bit longer. Um, probably by the end of year one okay. um, for six packs. Um, and I think we are going to do glass six packs. You know, right now it's like a big... It's like a big 50-50 for most breweries. Are we going to can versus bottle? And that's a whole other debate. But I think so. Um, but anyways, our six packs will be in retail shelves, grocery, liquor stores, in probably about a year. Um, but fairly soon after we start production, we're going to start doing hand, bottling by hand, large format, uh, 750s, like wine bottle size. Uh, and Piero and I built a, a hand bottle, a forehead. Uh, bottle filler, um, so we'll, we can we can crank out quite a bit um, with that. So I, I'd like to always have some large format of our beers um, in our in our, uh, our our reach in our retail cold case in the front. So if you want if you want to come in and have a couple pints and then take one as a gift, you can. But we'll also do growler fills, you know. Cool. Yeah. yeah. That's the so it's good thing you did that. Yeah. But those are only good for you know a week or so. If you want to hold on to something, then right. we'll, we'll sell the bottles too. Awesome. So. We're right, on, we're right on the verge of seeing MIA on the market. Yep. Um, the facility looks awesome. I bet you can't wait to get on this thing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We're we're, uh, we're all just like biting our nails every day. For sure. <laughs> um, we are very happy to have you down here. Uh, you know, the buzz around this place is awesome. Yeah. Um, as someone who's tried, a, obviously on this video, people see I've tried at least four. Uh, tried other ones. Um, there are some really awesome beers that are going to be coming our way here, in Miami. And um, you know it's it's really exciting to be kind of here while it's still in its infancy. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys are going to do in the future. Is there any parting words that you have? Um. Hmm. Oh man, that's tough. <laughs> you didn't prep me for that. No, I didn't, man. That's that's the curveball. Um. I guess what do you want to see Miami become? That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, the beer world. Is concerned. I would. I. I love the fact that in like two or three years, there's going to be 20 breweries here, and there will definitely be room for us all. It's not competition, really. It's there's. It's not a race to the top. It, you know, there's every, every. Everybody's got different tastes, so there's plenty of room. We can all thrive. The trick is for us all to make good beer, right? Because um, that's that's how we're going to stick out on a national level. Um, is we, we, we work on our consistency. Um, uh, that's something that's a very high priority for me. Uh, I, I, we have a lab and I'm going to build that up and I have a few, uh, we're going to phase it out as far as investment and, and equipment. And once we get to a certain level, I'd like to open it up to other area breweries right. to come in and test out their awesome. beers. Awesome. Um, so that they can, because, um, if we have five breweries that aren't consistent, they're making inferior product, flawed product, it's gonna it's gonna negatively reflect on all of us much more than if we had five great breweries. So sure. it's just it's it's really important for for all the new breweries in this 
in this country right now starting up to make great beer because it, 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 it's, you know, the, the weak ones will really bring us down. So, so make good beer. So <laughs> lesson, lesson for Miami, consistency and quality. Yeah. Rule the day. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much for uh, spending time with us. Thanks, Marco. Appreciate it. Uh, can't wait to see you guys. Come and see us.